Well, welcome back to another episode on the Ferrari. And in the last episode, obviously, you saw me take off the bonnet. Then take the windscreen out. And following that, undo about a thousand bolts and take the dash out. And not too much has changed since then, but you might notice we don't have the wing on the Ferrari at the minute, which I have taken apart, which I thought was gonna be quite an easy job from the wings I've done in the past, but this one, there were so many bolts to some weird hidden locations. Um, but anyway, it took me an hour or so to get that off, maybe just over actually, because yeah, I could only get some like eight turns on some of the screws with loads of extensions and yeah. What a, what a faff that was. But anyway, we're now in a position where that's gone off to the body shop and so has the crash bar. They're gonna get repaired. Uh, but for now, this means we've got the new dash, which has just arrived. And here is the new dash. And as you can see, obviously, it's in the wrong color. That's the color we want. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, actually, let me flip this over, is basically to see if I can change this leather color myself. But if that doesn't work, I'm obviously going to keep these parts and the red lever is actually in fine condition. There's no real issues with it. And same down here. So I can then just have these added to it. Obviously the bit underneath where the infotainment just pops out. So I can do this later on down the line if it doesn't work. But if I can avoid it, I don't want to mess around with the stitching on here. So I'm going to try and change that color further down the line. But for now, anyway, we've got a dash. It's time to start the impossible task and probably the one that I'm gonna need a lot of patience for of putting this dash back in the Ferrari. But of course, before we get into that, we do need to update our board now. Upper dash trim, that was actually incorrect. So obviously I'll end up going for a different one, the one that you've just seen, and that's in good condition, ready to go in. But that price is wrong. I actually got that for 1800 pounds, as you would have seen in the previous episode, which to be honest, we were quoted 2,600 fully to have the old one restitched, so that's actually a very good deal and we've actually saved a bit of money there. And that means up here I've got the dash stitching, well we don't need that anymore. And in terms of the price for the wing and the crash bar, I now do have that price. So the wing was, which way do around did they do? <laughs> the crash bar I think was 300. Crash bar. Well, let's see crash bar and wing. Can't remember which way round they were now, but one was 300 pounds and the other was 150, so 450 pounds. And it's quite likely that they, ha they have mentioned that they might need to repaint the wing and almost certainly will. Uh, so they'll just have to charge just for some paint as well, but not much. So it should be around 450 pounds. But anyway, that's the update. So back to the dash. And this was a pretty simple process of bolting the airbag onto the new dash, which is held on with just four bolts, one on each corner. After that, I can slide the fans into their positions and screw these in to hold them in place as well. here we have it so I think we're pretty well there now these are all in all the screws I believe I've got them all even one on the top and down there middle bits are in so yeah that's looking all right and with it flipped over you could see that's looking all right you're just gonna have to bear with me on the color on this this is gonna be like a, a fort for later um, I'm not gonna change that now so yeah this is looking good I think we can start to get this in the car now and a quick thought before I do is obviously I'm going to need to get these in fairly soon. The airbag lights, yellow and green. Because last thing I want to do is put all this dash back in the car and forget an airbag lead and the airbag light be on and then have to rip it all back out again. So I'm going to go very slowly and hopefully not miss a step. Get your fingers crossed for me. This is going to be tough. And it definitely proved to be a worthy adversary. But to begin with, I started by securing the dash to the car by bolting the six screws by where the windscreen would sit near the engine bay. A point on this for anyone doing the dash on their Ferrari California, you can save yourself a bit of trouble further down the line by attaching the speaker trims to the dash before you install it. This would have saved me a lot of bother had I done this. Of 
just been putting this bracket under here and I've remembered that this needs to go in, which yeah, there's gonna be a lot of this trial and error, getting stuff in, taking it back out. And whilst I've taken so many videos, there are, like I thought there would be, there's a couple of bits I've missed I should have documented that I didn't. So yeah, with a trial and error, we're gonna get there. I'm sure of that, but it's probably just gonna take a little bit longer than it should. As you see, I had to pull the bracket out to then feed this back on. Obviously it will get hold on, held on with a screw. Once I've got this piece back on, you can see it's this bit here, that'll hold it in place. And then it just feeds on to the air vent down there. And to be honest, another thought is that that probably didn't actually need to come out in the first place, but yeah, I've never done it. So live and we learn. And speaking of vents, I just remembered I had this one as well, which basically connects to the tube around here. Another part I didn't need to take apart, but I did. And then it's held on here. And then this clip sits on the top end and that sort of holds it in position. You can see in this clip, I'm watching the videos I made when taking the dash out and playing them in reverse. So I know I'm putting the screws in at the correct time and also not missing any out along the way. And this is why we do the videos because if I come above here, you can see down here, Hopefully there's a connection that's not filled, but everything else is in position. And just watching the footage back now, I can see that there was never actually a connection there, but it was stifling me for a bit, but thankfully I could check because I did the videos. Um, so if you're taking apart a Cali dash just on the off chance, take some videos, or to be honest, when you're taking any dash apart and doing electrical connections, just record it. You'll thank yourself later. Okay, well I managed to locate the uh, two cables for this dial keeping it just con under, not connected just for a second because I need to feed around here because I've found the other end of this terminal uh, or connection and it is, I don't know if it will even let me, as you can see it's back there. And the annoying thing is I've tightened everything off now so I can't exactly just pull the dash up. So I'm trying to see if I can feed it through with an Allen key, but failing that I'm gonna have to start dismantling stuff again. <laughs> Uh, I know it's going to be difficult, but you know what? It's not too bad, actually. Oh, what a relief. I managed to hook it around just enough to be able to get the connection on. So I can now tuck this back up out the way. It was a nerve cable. That's what it connected to. It was just held onto a screw at the other end. But obviously, I don't want to forget any of this. So I'm just making doubly sure. And before I'm fixing this unit back in properly, just want to be sure that I've got every single connection connected up um, and I'm not proceeding until I have because yeah, I definitely don't want to strip this down again. I really, really don't want to strip this down. And just to re-emphasize one more time, I really don't want to do it again. And how those words would haunt me. This middle section I had to put in a few times over. I thought I'd been thorough in my videos when recording them, but in truth, I probably could have been even more OTT. Okay, well that is that middle section in and we've got a good fit at the bottom that's fine fits fine over there but if you look closely here this is a bit lifted at the minute and now i think i found a culprit and it's not good news if i lift up here that's not bolted in and that's not bolted in there which means that middle section's coming out again but it should be all right after that one and yeah bit annoying if i'm honest but there we go. We're going to get this done, so let's just crack on. Just as well, I had to bring this back out, actually, because I'm noticing a couple of things. One was that I'd missed this screw here. That just connects down here. And obviously, once this is clipped on, I can't get that. And then also, I couldn't figure out how the bottom bolts sit in there, because as you can see, there's no actual holes for them to sort of sit into a screw into. So it just started raining very, very heavily. So I hope you can hear me okay. Um, but obviously, I've seen these, and that's going to be the solution, isn't it? We're going to get these clips on there, and then it will screw in that way. So I've been able to figure out how to do it properly now, so that's good. Having now figured out this conundrum, I was able to properly fit this middle section, and the fitment was looking mighty fine. Well, the heavens have opened outside. I hope you can hear me. It sounds like God's having a piss, um, and quite a long one. Uh, but anyway, Dash is now in. 
I think uh, brown and red go pretty well together. Don't know about you, but uh, I think that's uh, got, got to keep that, right? Because uh, I don't want to take this dash out again. I'm, I'm pretty confident I should be able to make that red. Um, it'll just be about whether I can match the red nicely or not. But worst case scenario, I do take the dash out and put the other stitching on, but I think we can get that to match. I just don't want to mess with the stitching along here. It looks pretty good and a lot better than obviously if I would do that myself or someone I know. But anyway, finally got this bit in and it fits properly. The gaps are perfect. So on to the next one. And well, next up is of course our glove compartment. So time to try and get this in there. This was one of the easiest parts to do, if I'm honest. The first two screws to go in were on the top left and right, which could hold the glove box to the substructure. And then after that, I can place the four larger hex bolts in, which are located at the back. Once that was completed, I just had to fit all the other screws in place. I think there was around six or eight off the top of my head. Put the chrome trim on now, so they're on there, but we do have an issue, which is this bit. As you can see, it must have been when removing it last time, uh, it's become damaged, as you can see. Uh, and the issue being is we need that to sit right in place. Otherwise, when we come to fit this part here, it's just gonna stick out and it's not gonna hold in properly. So gotta figure out what to do here now. I'm so I've got a couple of thoughts. I'm thinking overnight, if I can get some glue down here, glue it in as tight as I can, and then tomorrow, try and get some zip tie uh, down here and just sort of plastic weld the rest on and just sort of try and make a lump over there. Really make it as strong as possible and then probably do down here as well. So although it's going well, it's not all perfect, but I thought I'd show you that anyway just because you know i want to be honest with you uh, and you can try and avoid these mistakes so i think when i've come to pull it off last time the side piece i've just done it too hard and that's given me some headaches further down the line so if i'd just been a bit more careful i would have avoided it okay well that is now glued on and we're just gonna have to let that dry overnight then come back to it in the morning and plastic weld it on and just hope that will hold okay. And with this bit of chrome trim with Ferrari written on it clicked back into place, I can now turn my attention to the driver's side. Okay. I did initially start with the instrument cluster before having to stop because of an issue. Well, this is where I've got up to. I had to take this back out because I realized this, this was over out here. I've had to thread it back through then realized the tube which sits runs down under here wasn't connected onto its end so obviously it would have blown air out if i didn't fix that uh, i had to undo some screws to do that and so i just interrupt myself i can see the tube has now come off again <laughs> oh no no oh. frustrating to say the least but oh yeah that's a frustrating one thought i'd got that on which took forever to do um yeah, I need to find that clip again. Don't know what I've done with that. It was literally there a second ago. Odd. And then, yeah, I'm gonna have to put that tube back onto the hole or back onto the sort of space it was meant for and get this actually done properly. Um, I'm sort of reluctant to put the dash, well, the speedo here in until I've sorted all these issues, but also running out of time at 7 p.m. <laughs> I'm beginning to think I might, might head home in a second come at it with fresh ideas tomorrow, but I want to find that clip first, so I'm going to find that. Well, I've found the clip and it's just this bit here and basically it's meant to just sit down on it. Well, I'll show you. And it's basically just meant to sit down on there. As you can see, it's grabbing here because this is sitting too high up, I believe. But as you can see, it doesn't really want to move much. And that's because I've tightened up a few bolts now and I'm kind of wondering what's best to do here because yeah that, uh, <laughs> maybe it's just getting late maybe i just need some fresh ideas um and then come back tomorrow ah well there you go managed to just fix it before heading home and we got the clip on so 7 15 home time jumping straight into the next day i put the screws back in which i had to take out to move that air tube into its correct spot and then after that connect the instrument cluster to the substructure with two screws Okay, well what you've just seen me struggling away with was getting this screw in and this one down here. Now these were particularly difficult just because um, you had to sort of push 
this into place to get it to lock in the line the holes didn't line up and i've i've noticed that all the way across here and i guess that helps give it a really nice tight fit but you have to almost push things into position uh, you almost want another hand you want two to hold one to push one part down another to push a part up and then the other hand to screw in but unfortunately we are only blessed with the one pair of hands so anyway struggle through it got those on so now we can move on to getting the steering wheel on see from here things were progressing really well and I was getting closer and closer to the finishing line. Well that was until I had a bit of a blunder trying to fit the airbag. Well we've had a disaster because this has broken off and as you can see we need that to be connected. No! Thankfully the bit that had broken was from a removable part and similarly we're finding the dash online. In the last episode I had a bit more luck locating this part online. Well, having a look on eBay, thankfully there is another one of these that isn't broken and it's brand new, uh, genuine Ferrari part for £250. Now, this is actually someone I got the airbag off as well. Um, so I know the guy already, so I've sent him a message just checking that it fits a Cali T. And it turns out it wasn't for a Cali T, instead being for the original California. However, he did also have the Cali T part in stock for £350 plus shipping. Well, I guess a little bit of a bugger having to order that, but because I know the guy, he's gonna get that out for me on special delivery tomorrow. Um, and the cost of that was 360 pounds, which, let's get that in. Um, where should we go? What should we call it? Steering signal. 360 pounds. And because that's special delivery, we'll receive that tomorrow and we'll get that fit this episode. I mean, I think this looks pretty well fit. I mean, if you remember, we had issues with the fitment up here, that's gone. And then as we come round, the fitment all down here is absolutely fine as well. And even the steering wheel is on a nice fit too. So I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. So I'm gonna basically do a little change of plan. I was planning on being here all day, getting this completely ready and fixed in terms of putting a new dash in. But obviously we're gonna to have to wait for that part to arrive tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do now, go home, start editing this video. So then tomorrow morning I can finish it off, come back and just do that final bit of editing and hopefully get this out to you this weekend. But yeah, I guess you'll know now whether that was possible or not. The car was coming together nicely though, and I think I can say for a first try, it wasn't faultless, but I'm really proud of myself for doing it on my own. But for now, obviously, that's all we can do on the dash. So we're gonna skip to tomorrow. And like that, new day, nice and straightforward. We've even got the parcel just arrived. So we're on the home straight now. Let's get this dash finished. Let's get the steering wheel put together properly and the airbag. Let's go. And here's the item. And interestingly, just realized there's VAT on this. So that means once I've claimed it back, it's actually only gonna be 300 quid. So I think that's pretty good. Pretty happy with that. And now we know the parts should work absolutely fine. So frustratingly, I'm yet to master the art of not blocking the camera when working. So I'll try and explain the process as best I can. I started off with attaching the top part of the lever trim that sits beneath the cluster. These are the four holes where they screw into, and this is what I'm doing here. After that, I'm fitting the new clock spring that had just arrived, which is held on with three small screws. There's also an electrical connector connection as well. I'm then threading the electrical wires through the hole in the steering wheel and then bolting the wheel in. I remember this bolt being super tight, so I made sure it went back in with the same gusto. With that on tight, it was just the final touch of fitting the airbag, which clicks into place. And then after that, there's a screw either side of the steering wheel that holds it in place. <laughs> Job done, and this was a very, very satisfying feeling. Now it's all together though, I took the opportunity to give the car a bit of a hoover out as there was still some bits of glass in the mats from when I took the screen out. Now the quick hoover was done, the car interior was looking like a million dollars again. Ignoring the brown leather mismatch, of course. Okay, so dash is in. Really happy with the results, to be honest. Considering this is my first time, I think it's come out okay. Uh, I've got two more bolts here. They're basically just gonna bolt in down there, just little ones. But at the minute, I can't get the door properly open because of the post. So gonna have to wait until I can move the car forward, which brings me on to the next point. I can't move the car forward yet, or I don't think I can start the car without removing the crash data. 
So I need to get those coated off now. Now the airbag light is still gonna stay on because the seat belts are locked out. They're still stuck. Can't, can't get them to move whatsoever. So they're locked out and need changing, but I should be able to remove the codes, at least for the crash data, so I can get the car started and get it moving again. So we'll do that. And for this, I'm entrusting my Foxwell, I think it's called the NT530. Um, I've bought the uh, Ferrari software for this, which was 45 pounds, I believe. Installed it on here. So now we just need to plug it in to the OBD port and see what codes come up. Obviously we can re, Ooh. we can reconnect the battery. I will tighten it down properly in a bit, but just want to get these codes read. So, let's do it. Whew. Right. We've got life there. I'm gonna just turn this to ignition. Okay, I was beginning to get a bit worried that that might have shocked me then. So far, so good. So there's our airbag light. So, we go Ferrari, turn that fan down, quite a few codes, I'm going to go down to Cali 2, which is the F149, Kim L, there you go, quick scan, so we've got a few codes on there. I think these will all sort of stay there for now um, until I start the engine, but obviously you can try and clear the codes and hopefully that airbag light will go. And whilst it's scanning away, like I say, I don't think the codes, will, the airbag light will go now because it's all part of the same system with the seatbelt tensioner and I haven't had those reset yet. So it will stay on for now, but I can hopefully at least start the car about these airbags going off. <laughs> at least I think that's what would happen if I didn't do this. All right, so you're gonna go control modules airbag system i thought it'd be the srs let me just double check must be the same thing airbag system read codes active 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 miss missed so they're the ones i'm trying to clear but i think it's not letting me which means i might not be able to do it on this device it says you're supposed to be able to so maybe i'm just not figuring it out right codes cleared back read codes one two three four so it's still got those missed ones so that's a bit annoying i'm probably looks like i'm not going to be able to clear them on this device or i need to just have a little bit of a look around on how to properly do that but for now anyway we've at least got it all all in there it's looking pretty good everything's still working got my radio etc all the nozzles are working fans it's all looking pretty good Dash clusters all there. Got my indicators still. Everything's looking like it's working. Got the radio on. Timers on here as well. You can see that. So looking pretty good. If you happen to know a way around clearing the airbag without having a t the airbag fault or the airbag crash data without having to take it to Ferrari or someone who can do it mobile, please let me know down in the comments below because Unfortunately, it looks like I'm not going to be able to do any sort of ECU data clearing uh, with this device. So I'll probably need to have someone come in. If you know people who do that in the Surrey, London area, again, or even locally to that, just please let me know down in the comments below so I can get this all cleared off and we can really start with the main issue on the car, which is going to be the structural damage. And so there we have it. I'm a bit reluctant to actually try and start the car without clearing those codes. I feel like I've heard tales of airbags just redeploying um, and that's the last thing I want to do now so I just want to be doubly sure do some reading on it if you think I'm okay to start the car do let me know down in the comments below but I think I'm gonna to have to get rid of the crash data otherwise it's gonna send that same signal off to you know set the airbags off obviously some of those codes are gonna to be to do with seatbelt tensioners but the fact that I'm not able to clear them does make me think it's sort of crash data related and obviously we've got the airbag system failure as well it all sounds like it just needs clearing out somehow. So that's what I'm gonna to have to do. Gonna have, probably have to source someone to come in and do that. But that's all we got time for today. So thank you so much for watching. Do hit that like button down below if you've enjoyed the video. And also the subscribe button if you're new. And I'll see you very, very soon and we'll get it started on that front end. Cheers for now, bye bye.